Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com with our update for Tuesday, October 1st, 2019. Got a free pick coming up in just a moment. First quick note, I haven't talked about this for a while, but you get a great way to try out DocSports.com if you've yet to become a member. You click on the link below this video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account. Use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages over at DocSports.com or anybody else on the roster for that matter. Again, click on the link below the video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account and it comes with the DocSports.com guarantee even though it's a free 60 bucks. Again, get started by clicking on the link below the video. I think you'll be glad that you did. Not going to spend a lot of time telling you about what's coming up because it is our NFL recap uh, Tuesday for week four and I'll get to all that in just a moment with a free pick from tonight's Major League Baseball playoff opener. But before I get to all that, a real quick note, I do have a playoff side. You're going to get the total in just a bit, but I have the playoff side as a premium play over at DocSports.com. It'll be available Tuesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. I'm also at action in the WNBA. Seven-unit play going in Tuesday's Game 2 in the WNBA. It will be available after 1 p.m. Eastern time. We won in WNBA Finals Game Number 1. We cashed that ticket. We're now on 19 and 8 and 45 23 and 2 winning runs in the WNBA. Don't miss out on the seven unit play on Tuesday. And again, it will be posted at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Don't forget about hockey. It starts tomorrow on Wednesday. Love the early months. We showed you why again last year going 22 and 11 and picking up over $3,000 for $100 per unit betters through the first two months of last season. We just happen to like the very first couple of months of the season, basically more than anything else besides the playoffs when it comes to the NHL. So that, that's what's going on for me on Tuesday. Major League Baseball side and playoff action, WNBA 7-unit play, all available on Tuesday over at DocSports.com. Let's stay red hot in the WNBA, and let's start off the postseason in baseball the same way we started off the postseason in basketball in the WNBA with a nice winning card. All right, we'll get to the free pick in just a moment, but before I do that, it is Tuesday. It is football season. Week four just completed, and every Tuesday we do our NFL recap, try to get you some pertinent notes to be used moving forward uh, with your handicapping. Let's start first. No particular order here, just as I take notes and then type up my notes so I can read them a little bit better. Uh, Chargers over the Dolphins, 30 to 10. Charger backers, despite laying a couple of touchdowns, about 14 and a half, up to 16, uh, got the win. Melvin Gordon, by the way, was in uniform but didn't play. Austin Eckler, here's a guy who had six touchdowns in four games now, and he's going to show that this team has some depth at the running back position with Gordon coming back. How about Miami? They've been outscored 163 to 26. They've been outscored 81 to nothing in the second half of games this year. Here's how bad it is for Miami. NFL teams were on a 33 and 10 spread run if they scored less than 10 points in two straight games. Miami even blew that out the window by losing and not covering the spread on Saturday. The Titans go into Atlanta as an underdog, and they knock off the Falcons 24-10. Marcus Mariota, boy, he got the ball out quickly and with conviction. We don't always see that out of Mariota. 18 for 27, 227, three touchdowns, no picks. Here's a quirky angle for you. The Falcons have now lost 10 straight games against the spread against AFC teams. Uh, listen, Tinney outrushed the Falcons 138-58. to Derrick Henry 100 yards on 27 carries. Big Joes versus Pros on Sunday. The Joes or the public were on the Colts minus the points. The sharper players were on the Raiders plus the points, and the Sharps won that particular battle. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, pick six, was the killer in the Raiders' 31-24 victory. How about the rushing yardage? Nothing uh, fluky about this. The Raiders ran for 188 yards on nearly six yards per carry. The Colts, 81 yards on 3.5 yards per carry. you got to factor that into the mix that the Colts give up big chunks of yardage like they did this past weekend. Vontez perfect for the Raiders, of course, out for the season due to suspension. Wouldn't be shocked, though, if the players' uh, PA uh, appeals this decision on the suspension. Carolina knocks off Houston, 16-10, yet another road team winning on Sunday. Road teams have been ridiculous this year uh, in the NFL, but Houston running back, or I should say halfback option, wide receiver option, if you will, uh, in the red zone, using wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins 
in that passing play where he threw across the field and got it picked off in the red zone was one of the dumbest play calls I've ever seen from any coaching staff because the Carolina Panthers play mostly a zone defense. There's no way to draw the corner off his assignment, yet you're throwing right at him. Stupid call. Simple as that. I don't blame DeAndre Hopkins for this. Just a dumb call. At the time, by the way, it was a 3-3 game. Houston could have gone up 10-3 with about two minutes to go in the half if they don't pull that crap that they did in that particular play. And instead, not only do they get the interception, nice return on the interception, but just a short time later, McCaffrey runs it in for a touchdown. And instead of 10-3 Houston, it's 10-3 Carolina. Uh, Kyle Allen, another decent game for the most part, 24 for 34, 232 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Kyle Allen, though, now five fumbles in two games so far in the NFL. Redskins lose to the Giants 24 to 3. Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones, scanning his reads well when you watch this guy play. He goes through his progressions. He doesn't rush. He doesn't look to run too fast, although he can scramble and run. And then, of course, you had the flip side, Dwayne Haskins coming in for the skins and looking like he's got no business being on an NFL field right now. 9 for 17, 107 yards and three interceptions. By the way, D uh, Daniel Jones. He's played in two favorable spots so far for the Giants. He's got an angry Vikings defense coming to town next. We'll see how he fares there. Uh, the Seahawks knock off the Cardinals 27 to 10. Seahawks get the cover. Russell Wilson, nice day, 22 for 28, 240, a touchdown, no picks. His tight end, Will uh, Disley, has become a favorite of his. Seven grabs, 57 yards, and a touchdown. And then Chris Carson had the big day running the football. Uh, big difference in this game as far as who was going to eventually cover the spread. Pick six by Clowney, uh, who picked up a Kyler Murray pass, returned it for the score. Kyler Murray sacked four times. Uh, he had nowhere to go all game long, by the way. Cards are now 3-12 and 12 against the spread against teams that average at least 235 yards passing per game. Browns over the Ravens, 40-25. to 25. The Browns' second straight team to take away uh, Ravens' deep threat, Hollywood Brown at wide receiver. Take him away as we've seen two games in a row now. Lamar Jackson reverts more towards the Lamar Jackson of last year than in this year's first couple of the games. He had a rough one. He had two interceptions in this last game. The Browns had 530 yards of offense on almost nine yards per play to just 395 for Baltimore. Both teams had huge rushing numbers, by the way, in this particular game. Nick Chubb with a big game, 165 yards, three touchdowns. He was good last week, too, even in their loss. Uh, as far as the Ravens, they've covered just 10 of the last 30 home games when going up against teams with a losing record. They tend to be overvalued against losing teams, or they host those, up, uh, those teams. And again, just 10 and 20 in the last 30 against the spread against losing teams when at home. Jaguars 26, Broncos 24, crazy game. Denver led 7 to six with about five minutes to go in the third. He had the 81 yard run by Leonard Fournette. He finished with 225 yards on 29 carries. He had a buck and 90 in the second half alone. Uh, Josh Lambeau hits that 33 yarder at the end of the game for the Jaguars. Second time this season we've seen Denver lose in the closing seconds on a field goal. Uh, Minshew, decent game. Flacco, okay. Uh, Denver averaged about seven yards per play but outrushed 269 to 68. And how about this? Denver has now come covered just 11 of the last 34 games overall. The Patriots 16, Buffalo 10. If you had Buffalo, then send your thank you cards to Guskowski, who missed the extra point, allowing the Buffalo Bills to get the cover rather than a push. Uh, the Pats were inside the 10, you'll remember, up 13-0 in the second quarter, late second quarter, when Brady threw that pick. So instead of going up 20 to nothing, all of a sudden they had a game. Uh, he didn't have a big game passing-wise. The Bills, that defense is absolutely for real. That is a Super Bowl contending defense with garbage at quarterback. It is as simple as that. The Bills held the Pats to 224 total yards, held them to 5 of 18 third down conversions, held them to 11 first downs, but still couldn't get the win, even though they rushed for 6 yards per carry, even though they rushed for 135 yards, because Josh Allen is terrible and Matt Barkley isn't ready for prime time, and so he was unable to get any points on the board for Buffalo in four possessions when he came into the game, but uh, boy, if Buffalo had a quarterback, they would be extremely dangerous. Chiefs over the Lions, 34 to 30. Matthew Stafford did play hurt, give him a lot of credit. 21 for 34, three, uh, 291 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked four times by KC. 
He had the fumble inside the KC-10 uh, when the game was tied at 13. Chance to take the lead there. Couldn't do it. That was in the third quarter. Carry on Johnson has the fumble in the goal line. Controversial decision by the refs. The replay, all that kind of crap. And instead, it ends up being a 100-yard fumble return the other way. KC gets the score. So Detroit really did shoot themselves in the foot. And Galladay standing there watching uh, the kid for KC pick up the football and run 100 yards. He just dives at his legs. He makes the tackle at KC's own three yard line instead just whiffs just waves at him watches him goes by kind of stop playing on the so-called attempt for the tackle and uh, instead KC gets a touchdown out of it so bad move by uh, the uh, by Galladay for Detroit man you gotta play these these plays out to the very end reps aren't blowing the whistles as quickly uh, Detroit did run for 186 yards and over five yards per carry they held Mahomes in check no interceptions but also no touchdown passes 24 for 42 315 yards Lions let one slip away. Bears 16, Vikings 6. You know about Mitchell Trubisky. He's hurt. Not going to be playing out indefinitely with a shoulder injury at last check. Chase Daniel comes in. He knows the system as well as anybody on the team. 22 for 30, 195, a touchdown, no picks. He will be your starter for the Chicago Bears. Story of the game, though, the Bears defense. They held Dalvin Cook to 35 yards on 14 carries. The Bears had six sacks in the contest. Neither team was able to run, by the way, for that matter. Both teams averaged under three yards per carry. And then, of course, it was the Buccaneers 55-40 to 40 over the Rams. Uh, Tampa Bay 28 points off of four Ram turnovers. And listen, uh, Jameis Winston played well for the most part. 28 for 41, 385, four touchdowns, only one pick. The public was on Los Angeles. The Sharps were on Tampa Bay. Sent that line from 10 down to nine in some shops. Shaq Barrett, one of my favorite defenders, and he plays for the Buccaneers, had nine sacks so far uh, through the first few games of the series uh, of the season, I should say now, uh, just getting to the quarterback left and right. Goff now, by the way, going back to the Super Bowl loss to New England when they kind of laid the blueprint on how to defend the Rams game. Well, he's now got six touchdowns and seven interceptions in five games going back uh, to the Super Bowl loss. Sunday night football was our top play of the week. We had the Saints and they got the win over Dallas 12 to 10. Dak Prescott after just playing lights out and that offense playing lights out first couple of the games of the season. Well, they go into New Orleans and they got completely shut down. Saints get the win 12 to 10 on Sunday night. Just completed. Small play for me in the Bengals, uh, but a loss, obviously, nonetheless. Pittsburgh 27 to 3. They outgained Cincy 326 to 175. And I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that Cincy was the right side. But once again, they blew several chances to take an early lead, go up. 10-3, 10-0, couldn't get the job done. Turnovers deep in Pittsburgh territory. Next thing you know, Pittsburgh takes over. Cincy's confidence is lost. Cincy loses. Pittsburgh gets a very much needed victory. So there you have it. Six unit play was a winner with the Saints. Unfortunately, three unit play last night lost with the Cincinnati Bengals. But those six unit plays, by the way, now 4-0 in football so far in 2019. All right, don't forget on, we'll get to the free pick in a second, but don't forget on uh, Tuesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern is when I post a baseball play. It's a side, the premium play for Tuesday night's opener in Major League Baseball playoff action. Brewers taking on the Nats. And also WNBA, seven unit play as we look to go to 20-8 and eight short term, 46-23-2 long term in the WNBA. And again, that seven unit play will be posted on Tuesday 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's get to the free pick. We'll make it quick. Again, the Brewers at the Nats. It'll be Woodruff for Milwaukee. Scherzer for the Nationals. Should probably be a short start for Woodruff. I'm guessing around four innings of action. Uh, but listen, this team, the Brewers, has been really strong at playing, or I shouldn't say they have been strong, but their opponents have been strong at forcing overs when Woodruff is on the mound. Four, uh, they, they've gone over the total with uh, Woodruff on the mound against teams with a winning record is what I'm trying to say here. More more often than not of late. So when he goes up against teams with a winning record, the Brewers games usually get over the total without much trouble. As far as Scherzer is concerned, when you look at what he's done, four of Washington's last five with Scherzer on the bump have seen the over cash. And the, the, the Nats themselves have played to four straight overs going up against right-handed starters. Listen, if Scherzer, Scherzer's pitching well, he's gonna be in for the entire game. We don't know if he's gonna be there. His ERA has not been quite where it's at. Uh, since coming back from the injury. As far as Woodruff, probably, again, three to four innings is what you're going to see out of him, Max. But we like, for a free pick, the over between the Brewers and the Nats. 
Tuesday night's uh, opener in Major League Baseball playoff action. The side is available 11.30 a.m. Eastern over at Doc Sports. Dot com. All right, listen, that's going to do it for us for Tuesday on Wednesday's video. It'll be shorter, uh, but again, we'll have a free pick from Wednesday's card. Don't forget about the NHL starting on Wednesday. Also, if you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here Wednesday morning.